Hey y'all, if you've been around for a while, you might remember me as that person who's been making study advice videos on YouTube for almost five years at this point. And I can say without a shadow of a doubt that I got started way before I was actually qualified to be giving out this sort of advice. I don't know what I was thinking in my freshman year of high school, thinking that I could put stuff out there as if I had any sort of knowledge or authority to be telling people what to do, but at least I had the audacity. Even now, I still don't think I know enough to be telling people what to do, but I definitely feel like I've started taking a more balanced approach to advice anyways. More of a, this is what worked for me, your mileage may vary, but I'm just sharing my stuff. But that's neither here nor there, not really the point of this video. Today, we're going to be watching my old study advice videos and one, we're gonna get some educational content out of me telling you what I actually think is still a good idea from all this stuff. And we'll probably get some entertainment value out of just watching me cringe at how horrible my videos were back then. And by the way, I'm gonna have my viewing experience on this fancy schmancy beautiful new Samsung Galaxy S21 Plus 5G. And that brings me to a quick message from today's sponsor, Verizon. I'm guessing most of you watching this are students just like I am, and the great thing about Verizon is that they're offering a fantastic student discount at the moment. College students can save up to $25 a month on an unlimited plan with two lines, and $10 a month on an unlimited plan with one line. On top of that, you can also get up to a $200 plan discount on select Samsung devices like this one right here when you open a new line. And if you end up getting a Samsung phone that offers 5G like this one, Verizon lets you take advantage of that too. You'll have access to 5G nationwide and in certain places you'll have access to 5G ultra wide band. If this sounds interesting to you, check out the link in the description below. Thanks Verizon for sponsoring this video and now let's get on to the reaction stuff. Um, I'm pretty nervous, not gonna lie, cause I already find my voice annoying most of the time, so uh, my freshman year voice? Probably even more annoying than I am now, if that's even possible. My first video is about what's in my pen case, and I remember this very vividly because I've remade a what's in my pen case video every single year after that on approximately the date of my channel anniversary. This video isn't really related to study tips, so we're gonna unfortunately skip over it on this video. But let's move on to my third video that I ever posted about study with me for biology. I was so freaking neurotic about this class. For some reason, I was convinced that I was failing it, even though I got like a 93 on every test. I don't think it's bad that I wanted perfection in my freshman year of high school. It's good to strive to be good at things. But at the same time, that mindset promoted so much burnout in me as I progressed through the rest of my high school years. And I'm still trying to let go of that unhealthy, almost like toxic perfectionism to this day. So that's the life anecdote this video reminds me of, but let's watch this four minute video and see what advice it has to offer. Hi guys, it's Jasmine from Study Quill. Today I'm gonna be doing my first really quick study with me video. Oh my God, why was my voice so high pitched? Oh, it was cause I hadn't fully finished puberty yet and I also did my customer service voice. Today I'm taking notes on biology. So first, I'm writing down the pages I'm taking notes on at the top of the page. By the way, if you were wondering what those little green things are in the top left corner, they're page flags that I stuck on the top shelf of my desk and I forgot to take them off before filming. Oh, even in the early days, I was making errors, having random objects in the frame and trying to be relatable by pointing out that I make mistakes. I don't mean to like crap all over people who you follow on the internet because I can't really know all of them, but most of us who do social media have this pressure to maintain a perfect image, but only show enough perfect imperfections so as to maintain a relatable image. And I think that's kind of what I was doing at this point. This free iMovie music is really bopping. So unrelated to study techniques, I still do like doing calligraphy headers, but I've definitely improved a lot at calligraphy from this point, and I don't really recommend the method that you're seeing right here. I'm holding the pen way too close to the tip and applying the pressure in almost like a directly vertical fashion, like the angle between my pen and the paper is like straight up 90 degrees, which definitely contributes to damaging the brush pen tip. Instead, I'd recommend going at a more 45 degree angle if you're doing calligraphy note headers. Regardless, we haven't even talked about study tips. Let's continue. So next, I choose a color of zebra mild liner based on the title. So element sounds like emerald, and that reminded me of Emerald City, which reminded me of Yellow Brick Road. It's 
kind of a stretch, but anyways, I'm highlighting two lines, or sometimes I'll do a different number of lines, but it's just to divide the top of the page. I do think it's a bit ridiculous that I spent half of this video showing like the calligraphy header and not elaborating at all on my note-taking methods. Like, I guess it really goes to illustrate the point that when I first started doing study blur and study gram and, you know, study YouTube, the focus was really on aesthetic. And I fear that maybe that's what a lot of this community still focuses on. I don't want it to be what I mostly think about when I'm studying. I sort of lost where my sentence started, but I think my point is that this is a little microcosm of like how the internet version of studying is really focused on how it looks and not necessarily how much you're actually learning. Although I don't like doubt that I was learning a lot at this time because I went from like getting high B's on my bio test to having almost 100% by the end of the second semester. So I'm sure like the study methods were working out all right. So the reason I keep pausing is to read over the information and decide what's important enough to write down. And normally I'll write everything down within a subtopic, and then go back and highlight all the key terms. I think that's a pretty good method, like writing everything down first, or like skimming everything at least, so you can identify what's important before you start highlighting it. And around here, I drank some tea and then took a little break because I was starting to get tired. Oh my god, that's so cute. I wrote like half a page and I decided I was tired. I really don't mean to be targeting you if you're the kind of person who, like me in the past, was a little bit more easy to tire, but now I can do like 30 pages of reading and be like, oh, that was a quick one hour study session. That's not too bad at all. Real short, real easy. I've really grown a lot since then. <sighs> we love to see it. Overall, I don't disapprove of all the note-taking methods I used. I disapprove of the fact that I spent two minutes explaining how to do calligraphy headers and literally no time explaining how the heck I was taking notes besides that I was reading the whole paragraph before writing things or highlighting things. I also spent a disproportionate amount of time explaining the supplies I was using, which also was definitely a common theme back when I first started making YouTube videos. Just like how I previously discussed how StudyTube and StudyGram and all that are aesthetic based, they're also very much like materialistic based, at least when you're younger. I tended to believe that just by having the right supplies, if I had the perfect backpack and the iPad and everything like that, my study life would be perfect, I'd be a perfect student and I'd get perfect grades, but there's really no correlation between having stuff and learning things. And so I'm pretty glad that my mindset has evolved a lot from back then. Not that there's anything wrong with loving stationery, because I still definitely do, but I just feel like it should be emphasized a lot less than the actual study methods you're using day to day. The only thing that bothers me about this is like, this is objectively not a very good video. I keep talking about how I'm making so many mistakes when filming it, and I really didn't explain my note-taking techniques in any way. You can only visually look at them. And now, even though I know how to make better videos, the quality no longer really correlates to the popularity of it. And that's something I'm, I guess, working to accept, not to get into like YouTuber therapy talk or anything, because like I know nobody wants to listen to influencers complain about their jobs, but, it's kind of disheartening that quality and effort don't correlate to numerical success. That's all I want to say about this video. Overall, I think that was cute. We got a million views on how to organize for school, and it's 4 minutes and 19 seconds long. There is no way I actually explained in depth how to organize for school. I guess we'll check it out. Hi guys, it's Jasmine from Study Club. First of all, if you're watching this when it comes out, happy Halloween! Today I'm showing you how to organize your school supplies. First of all, you need a way to store your pens and pencils. It may seem obvious, but the best way to do this is in a pencil case. I use this Lihit lab bag. You can learn more about how it's organized in my what's in my pencil case video. You can also use the pouches in the front of your bag, but a pen case is more convenient because you don't have to dig through your bag every time you want to use something different. That is some good elaboration right there. I was starting to get a little bit disappointed in myself because the whole intro segment was just highlighting products. I don't think I was purposefully trying to sell people stuff, but it did play into the misguided belief that buying a pencil pouch with a lot of organizational pockets would make you organized. Products don't matter, but I do agree that having a pencil pouch that's separate from your backpack is very convenient. There are a lot of ways to store papers, and I'll be showing you four possible ways. 
I personally use an expanding file folder with one section for each class. It's compact and light, but a downside is that you can't really see the papers. You just see a bit of the side when you're shuffling through. Okay, maybe people were attracted to this video because it is so concise. Okay, first of all, I continued to use the expanding file folder as my main organization method throughout the rest of high school. I don't really use it right now because college is entirely online, but looking back at a more like media analysis lens, I think the reason this was so attractive to people was that it was so clear and concise. Like my weakness in high school English, according to high school English teachers, was that I didn't write enough. I just wrote, like, here is my point, and I didn't want to elaborate on it real clearly. But now I've adapted to the academic environment where I just say a lot of words and hope that one of them hits the point that people are looking for, or at the very least do my very best to thoroughly flesh out a point instead of just saying one super concise sentence. And I think that's a strong thing for us hoity-toity pretentious academics, but it doesn't really appeal to like the average person who just wants a quick snappy piece of advice, one sentence, cut and done. And so that's probably what made my oldest video so appealing compared to the lengthy, pretentious mess that I am today. <laughs> Organizational tips and tricks are nice, but ultimately the only way to stay organized is to keep things where they need to be. That depends on you, not cute DIYs or life hacks, although those can be helpful to keep you motivated. Thanks for watching. Why was this so genius? I post videos every what? Monday and you How? can check out my blog posts. Why was this such a good video? No wonder it has a freaking million views. I packed all that information into four minutes and 19 seconds and it was interesting and good. Like, I don't want to think that I peaked as a freaking child, but, but maybe I did. I feel like one of my weaknesses with producing social media content today, something I kind of touched on earlier, is that now that I've like ascended to a higher level of education and a very prestigious level of higher education at that, I'm just annoyingly intellectual. <laughs> And at this point I've just accepted like, yeah, this is one of my like quote unquote flaws. And like, I'm not gonna mask who I am just to be like more broadly relatable on the internet. So that's just something we're gonna have to deal with on this channel. You know what I mean? There's something to be said about like smart women being called pretentious for just having the audacity to be smart while being female. Not really something that I can fully offer an interesting discussion on in like a 30 second aside about my video about how to organize for school. We're gonna move on to this video with 384,000 views called How to Study Math. Hi guys, it's Jasmine from Study Cool. Today, I'll be giving you some tips on how to study for math and how to succeed in math exams. You may notice that there isn't any video footage and that this video kind of looks like a PowerPoint presentation. Well, this video is basically a revised and narrated version of my how to study math post on my blog. Okay, so I was making literal PowerPoint presentations, a dictation of a blog post, and it was getting 384,000 views. Once again, clearly effort and quality do not correlate with numerical success in this freaking industry. First of all, you'll need to take good notes in class so you can study from them, obviously. Make sure you write down any key terms, facts, and formula. I think that's a great idea. One thing to note is that when I filmed this video, I hadn't even finished Algebra 2 yet. So again, where did I receive the audacity to be giving advice about math? I have no idea. If you can write while listening, copy down one or two examples that your teacher shows you. If you can't do those at once, Pay attention to how your teacher does the problem and make sure you can understand their steps. It'll help you more to understand how the problem is done than it will to see the solution in your notes. I am not 100% sold on that understanding is better than copying point because yes, it's very important to understand, but it's also very important to have that understanding written down so that, as I clearly mentioned earlier in the video, you can study from it. Like one thing I've noticed when I do math, it's pretty easy to understand it when you watch the teacher do it and then you try to do it on your own, literally nothing makes sense. And so that's where the importance of writing down the steps and quick explanations for every step becomes super important. If you can't copy and understand examples at the same time, just pick one or the other, but then afterward, you also have to go back and do the second one. 
In fact, now that I'm thinking about it, it's probably better to write everything down first and then do your understanding afterward because getting notes from somebody else or trying and hoping to find it in a textbook, those aren't guaranteed. You never know whether actually anybody will be willing to give you their notes. And so if you can't get those things, you're crap out of luck. I mean, and even if you think you understood it in class, you might end up doing it wrong in your notes because, you know, you're not following along so that you can see the correct steps and the correct final answer. So you know what? Yeah, I decided now that I fully disagree with this point. I think if you can't do both at the same time, you should copy it down and then seek to understand it afterward. Bam. What should you do before a test? You should be reviewing every day using the curve of forgetting printable I mentioned earlier. But we can't all be on top of it all the time. The best time to start studying is at the beginning of the year, but the second best time is now. Put that on my Pinterest board. The first best time to start studying was like the beginning of the year. The second best is now. I need to print that on merch. Copywriting that. Don't steal that. But yeah, that's the end of this video. So let's scroll through now to the first video in which I actually show my face called Shoddily Filmed Q&A. It's got 22,000 views, even though the thumbnail is literally a black screen. I'm scared. I don't remember what I looked like at this time. When was this posted? March 27th, 2017. So that's pretty much exactly four years ago. And that was when I was in the second semester of my freshman year of high school. Hi oh my God. Today I'm going to be answering some oh my God. Is this what I really looked like in freshman year of high school? Why didn't I comb my hair before filming this video? Why did my face look like this? I think it's probably just because the camera's out of focus and like underneath my chin. Have I glowed up? I think I think I've definitely glowed up. Maybe I should make one of those glow up TikToks. And I am in ninth grade. I am a freshman in high school. What did you want to be as an adult as a kid and how has that changed? My mom says that when I was a toddler, I wanted I to be so a firefighter. Stilted. I used to get comments about like, your voice sounds so monotonous and robotic. And I was like, no, it doesn't. That's just how I talk in real life. But it was definitely not how I talked in real life. I should have just taken the criticism. And like, they were right. I hadn't gotten comfortable on camera yet, you know? And that's nothing to be ashamed of. It just takes a while to adjust for most people. It took me like four freaking years to do that. And yeah, I was just so defensive back then. I don't know what was up with me. But I'm doing better now. Oh my god, okay, well that was kind of cute. I love getting a little look into how past me lived her life. But yeah, that's the end of today's video. I hope you found it interesting and thank you for watching. I upload new videos every week on this channel about student life and you can visit my Tumblr. My Tumblr? No, I don't have a Tumblr anymore. My Instagram, TikTok, and second channel for some other non-study related content. See you next time. Mm -hmm.